Hey, this is Nyakum. Welcome to Obi Studios. In today's video, we are going to double into CSS grid when it comes to Gutenberg, especially if you're using a toolkit like Quickly. Quickly's CSS grid builder is the best by far that I have used or I have tried when it comes to using CSS grid. And if you haven't used CSS grid before, this might be more like an introductory um, video for you to try CSS grid. It is better than Flexbox. Flexbox has its own strength, but CSS grid has an upper hand when it comes to building more complex layout. CSS grid is not complex, but you can use it to build a layout that is super complex. Let's go into Figma and I'm going to show you a complex layout that you can use CSS grid to build that Flexbox wouldn't have any chance when it comes to building it. All right, so here in Figma, I have a little design, um, a little layout over here. Uh, I found a layout online that was complex. So I was like, okay, let's draw it up in Figma and then let's use it for the tutorial. All right, so in this design, you can see that there, you can, you can see that this one, if we're dealing with Flexbox, you won't be able to do this unless you're using absolute position. So you might have to absolute position this one. And by using that, you might be able to like create a grid over here and then create like overflows and stuff like that. But in CSS grid, you can do this natively. You can do this design without you having to think about, oh, I am using, I am using anything with overflow or I'm moving this here or you have to make sure your overflow is working and that stuff like that. CSS grid just makes you, gives you the opportunity or gives you um, the tools for you to build this layout seamlessly. That is what we're going to try and do using Quickly's CSS Builder. Sorry, yeah, Quickly's Grid Builder. Yeah, that's what you call it. All right, so going into, so I have this layout over here. I have this page over here. And within this page, there are a few things that you have to understand when it comes to building using CSS Grid when it comes to Quickly. Uh, and Quickly, you cannot use CSS Grid when you have a section. So let's say you have a section like this. Let me delete this paragraph. So we have a section over here. When we go to layout and then for the display, when you choose grid, nothing will happen. But let's say you put in a div, right? So you think that, okay, a div, if I choose grid, nothing is still going to happen. And quickly, quickly has a grid builder that only works in columns. So if you want to use the grid builder that is incorporated in quickly, you will have to use the column element. So if you pop the column into, you can pop the column into itself. It can be by itself. You can put it inside a section. You can put a column also inside a div. It doesn't matter where you put a column, but CSS grid only works in the column. It doesn't work outside of the column structure so since that is out of the way now let's get into building something with the css grid all right so in the column it gives you like pre-made um layouts over here we are not using any of that we want to build our own layout so i'm just going to choose the very first one which is um just one fraction of the layout so we have one column and then this is the main column that holds all the columns so after choosing the main column you might be in the primary. If you're not in the primary, just click on the primary. And then in the primary section down over here, you see three, um, three tabs, one for the setting, two for colors. And then you see this white one, which says grid editor. So for the grid editor, you just want to click on that. So in here, let me just put this one in the middle. So in here, what you can see is you have something called fractions. Um, you have minimum height. You have row gap, you have column gap, and then you have allow overflow. So the fractions indicate how many, um, let's say segments inside the columns that you're going to have inside the main column. So let's say if I say I want one fraction, two fraction, three fraction. So now you can see that you need to stretch this one layer, this one column that we have here. Let me go back into. So this one column that you have here, you can stretch it three times. So or three steps or three fractions. So one third of the fraction 
two third of the fraction and then a full fraction of it which is a, a full one or whatever that you want to call it so that is that is what these fractions indicate indicates how many steps that you can take to get to a full width all right the minimum height also indicates the minimum height that each column is going to take so if if i say my minimum height is 400 you can see that now the column just stretched 400 pixels down you can change this one into anything else into um let's say more than pixels over here you can just put 400 so you can type in 400 and then you get 400 pixels down for the row gap indicates if i have another column so let's add another column in here when you click on this plus icon you can see that now we have column number two and then on the left hand side too you can see that you do have column number two over here all right so for column number two if i put row gap of 20 you can see that now i do have space between the two for 20 and then you can see that there's a gap at the top but when you are displaying in the front end the gap at the top wouldn't show the gap at the top wouldn't show but the gap between the items are going to show then you do have row oh sorry you do have column gap so for for column gap if let's say i give it 20 consider the left hand side also showed that there's a column gap but it's not going to show in the front end so if i pop this one to the right consider now we do have column gap of 20 between the two column so that is what this is about so let's go back into our design in figma so over here how many columns do we have or how many fractions so we have fraction number one fraction number two and then fraction number three that is by looking at the design that you have you can understand how many fractions you need to be able to create the layout that you want for me i do think for my design i do need three fractions why is that i don't need two if i do put two fractions i won't be able to have three columns on the row or three columns in a column because i have three let's say three boxes right or i have three columns that are over here for me to be able to get three columns that sit in a column i will need to make sure that my fraction is at three so we have three fractions over here for the height you don't really have to do any of that it is only for the width that you have to determine how many fractions that you need so i have indicated that i need three fractions so i'm going to go back into my design over here and then i'm going to make sure that i have three so i have three over here going back into figma i'm going to check for the space in between sorry so the space in between here is 30 pixels so i'm going to go back into my design make sure that my space for the column is 30 pixels for the row is also 30 pixels now i want to check my height my height for one block the minimum there's the smallest block that i do have so i'm going to use the smallest block as my what you call it it's going to be more like my measuring my measuring rock or my measuring tape or what i'm going to use as the indicator for the smallest height that i need so it is 294 so i'm just going to copy that and then go into my design and for the minimum i'm just going to paste in 294 so that is good all right so the next thing that i want to do is i need how many columns now do i need one two three four five six i need six columns so i already have two columns i'm just going to add four more so this will be three four five six so now i have created or i've added six columns inside my grid six columns inside my grid all right so now let's try and create the design that we have so we have this stretching out into that there's a way to do that without using let's say overflow so i'm going to show you that all right so number one and two are overlapping on each other to do that you can see this allow overlap i'm just going to click on this over here and then overlap is going to happen so now when i drag this to the right because you can see that number two is over here this is number three you can see one two three so number two is covering from what the second fraction into the third fraction so as you can see so i can drag this back into the fraction the second fraction and then i can hold and drag it into the third fraction so box number two or column number two is occupying to third of the fraction 
box number one two is also occupying two third of the fraction when when you bring your mouse over here so when you put your mouse over here you can just hold and then drag it down or when you bring it to the edge or the corner is it the right corner the right bottom corner you can see that you have this indicator that shows you pulling something so that is what you need so you can see that there's also this over here but then make sure I do have that and this one is overlapping that but yeah so you can also hold and drag this one too so that is what we have done the next thing that I want to do is I want to create number three so number three is covering this so one let's say this is one column two column three columns so number three is covering three columns number two is covering two columns down or two heights down so i'm going to go back into number two just hold it and then drag it down over here so now you can see that on over here number one is covering it but it is coming down like that so that's the same thing that we've created all right so the next thing to do is to pop in number four and then number five so you can see that number four is on the right hand side let's call this on number four and then this is number five and this is number six so they are arranged like this so i'm just going to put this one over here and then just drag this and put it over here so now you can see that they are on this side the next thing that we want to do is we want to stretch number three so that it can come all the way down so hold this and then just drag it down and then voila we have created a complex a really complex layout in very few clicks if i wasn't talking and i was just laying out this i could have done that in more like probably a minute but if i was using flexbox there would have been a lot of tingering with the hides with the positioning and all of those stuff but you knowing your design before you started you can just pop in the values that you need and then you can just drag it like this that's what i'm saying that quickly has the best implementation of the grid system that i have used i've used a few but quickly has the best implementation that is out there with this drag then over here like that it is the best thing out there for anybody who wants to use a visual builder there's a visual builder so when things are visually um when you are able to do things visually without having to write too much um, code or knowing what the fraction is because if uh if you used any of the other builders or if you use some of the other builders out there you have to input your own fractions if you don't understand what fractions are yeah you might have to spin your head a bit you have to go online go and search stuff but this this implementation is good so that is our layout um what we can do is if let's say you have um one more thing that you want to know if let's say you do have like this and you want to reduce the height you can definitely reduce the height even though it does have like a minimum height uh, not a minimum height but if let's say the height is becoming too much i'm, I'm going to show you something so let's click in here and then i'm going to add an image inside so i added an image inside i'm going to click on the image go to primary and then i'm going to select that image so you can see that the height has shrink or has shrunk the height of the image has shrunk but the height of this is still the same we can click on the image right and then go into the size and then give it like 100 percent when you give it 100 percent of the height it's going to take 100 percent of let's say the column in which it sits inside and this column has a height of 294 times three so and then you can just make sure that this is covered so it doesn't look distorted like that so that is that if i duplicate this and then i put it let's say inside here okay so that this one has become this column has now become really long which we do not want so what i can do is i just have to change this one into 294 pixels for the height and then for the width i can just give it 100 percent and then the cover is good so you can see that it's still re uh, retaining the um the height of the column so the height that we have for the column is still retaining it but the picture can change the height of its own self like for this the picture can change its own height and then also when you click on here 
the primary two, you can go in and change the height that you want. If you want, if let's say we want to change, let's say size and we want to change the height to, let's say 350. Consider now we've changed the, um, the size of this or the height of this into a different size. So even though you do have a minimum size, you can still change it into the size that you need. So if you haven't tried CSS grid yet, or you don't have it in the builder that you're using and you're trying to find a builder that has CSS grid, quickly does have CSS grid. That is pretty good. So you can test it out. You can try and see how um, how powerful it is. I've used it. It's pretty good. Um, yeah. And apart from that, I don't think there's anything pretty. Um, yeah. And there are other options over here. You can use auto grid and other stuff like that. But we are not going to touch on that. I just wanted to show you the grid builder that is within quickly. My name is Nyakon. If you did enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up. Um, if you haven't subscribed to the channel too, you can give, you can also subscribe to the channel and yep. If you want to buy quickly, there's a link down below. It's an affiliate link. You can use the affiliate link if you want. If not, you can just go to quickly.com and then also purchase yours. Um, thank you for watching. I'll catch you on the next one.